everybody. Here we are all ready to take you down to Pine Ridge for another visit with Lum and Abner. Brought to you by the makers of Horlicks, the original malted milk. Before we hear Lum and Abner tonight, here's a message of interest to mothers of growing children. You can't do these youngsters of yours a better turn than to let them drink plenty of Horlicks malted milk. They need something like Horlicks, need the precious bodybuilding elements it contains. The vitamins, the calcium, phosphorus, and iron, so essential for the development of strong, sturdy bodies, sound bones and teeth. They need lots of nourishment, too, as all mothers know. But that's not all. This nourishment must be in a form their digestive systems can easily handle. That's why so many child-feeding authorities recommend Horlicks. It's so easy to digest. Remember that when you buy malted milk. Insist on Horlicks, the original. The children prefer it, too. They like the delicious flavor. And now, folks, here's good news about that flashlight that Lum and Abner recently offered. The flashlight factory has finally gotten organized and is turning out thousands of flashlights a day. Lum and Abner want you to know that every one of you who wrote in will receive his flashlight within a very few weeks. And now... Let's see what's happening down in Pine Ridge. Since Lum and Abner took over the circus that was stranded in Pine Ridge, they have been faced with the problem of supplying feed for the animals. Well, Abner has apparently solved the problem. He announced over the party line yesterday that anybody would be admitted to see the animals if they brought along a generous supply of feed. <laughs> the plan was tried out this afternoon. And as we look in on Pine Ridge today... We find Lum and Dick Huddleston on their way over to the circus grounds to find out how the scheme worked. Listen. Oh, yeah. Yeah, he had a big crowd over here. Folks been going by the store there all day in wagons and cars and foot and every other way. Yeah. Well, I couldn't understand at first how I come so many people in town. Oh, that announcement Abner made over the party lines, what brung them. Everybody wanted to see the circus, but they just never had no cash money. Why, now, anybody can find a little feed around the place. (laughs) Well, I bet there's lots of folks, cows and horses, that's going to go hungry tonight because they went to the circus today. (laughs) Yeah. I'm sort of curious to know how much feed he took in today. Wonder where he's at. I don't know. Yeah, you ought to go Cedric carrying some water, it looks like. Yeah. Hey, Cedric, whereabouts is Abner at? Must be inside there. He's inside the tent there, I think, Mr. Lum. Uh, Did you have a pretty big crowd today, Cedric? Yes, Mom. Kept that tent full all afternoon. I think Mr. Abner's back there with the bunkie cage. That's where he spends most of his time at. <laughs> hey, you got quite a job there, Cedric, carrying water for all them animals. Yes, Mom. That's all I've did all day is pack water for them elephants. I don't know where they put it all. <laughs> Looks to me like it'd be a lot easier to take the elephants down to the creek. <laughs> well, it would if we had some way of getting them down there, but I don't know how to drive them yet. <laughs> oh, yonder's Abner, right there. Yeah. I still got on that ringmaster's outfit. <laughs> uh, Granny, you don't mean to say you took in all this feed this afternoon, did you, Cedric? Yes, Mom, that's what there is left. See, we've already fed the animals a while ago once. Well, for the land's sake. Well, it looks like you got a half a carload of hay left there yet. Hey, Abner, come here a minute. <laughs> My Jack, you fellas have got quite a bunch of animals in here all right, you oh, know what? Yeah. Well, howdy, fellas. Uh, did you see the feed we've taken in this afternoon? Yeah, we were just looking at it. <laughs> Looks like you've done uncommonly well with oh, your scheme. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. There's enough feed there to last us three or four days. Yeah, that was a good idea, letting them pay the way in for feed. Yeah, well, everybody just tickled to death over it. Most of them said they're coming back again, too. Yeah. Oh, you going to keep on running it like this, Abner? Why, sure, yeah. Going to put on another show tonight. I, I believe we're letting them in too cheap, old Lom. Too cheap. And I, I believe we ought to charge them two bushels of corn or two bales of hay to get in. That is, to let a whole family in that way. I never knowed there was such big families in this community. Oscar Fields come in here at that tribe I hid in the day, and they went by me there at the door for a half hour, it seemed like. I counted 21 of them. 21? Yes, sir. Maybe you run in some ringers on them. No, no, you could tell them they all looked as much alike as peas in a pod. And the boys' shirts and the girls' dresses were all made off the same bowl of goods, so I know they'd all hit them. Yeah. Uh, what if a fellow don't bring his family, though, and it just comes by itself? What do you charge him? Oh, uh, well, one person had a way. Why, 
They can get in for a bucket of chops or a bucket of bran. Oh, wait a minute, wait a minute. That'll be enough water for them elephants there, Cedric. The young'uns have fed them so many peanuts today, I'm fair to give them too much to drink. Hey, you better take that zebra down there some hay, too. We missed him a while ago when we were feeding them. Yes, Mom. Yeah. Officer. I believe that zebra's a fake, man. I believe it's just a white mule that they got someplace and then painted black stripes on them. I can tell where they're sort of fading off there. You can? Yeah, I'm going to have to get some paint and sort of touch him up a little tomorrow. <laughs> it keeps you pretty busy around here, don't it, Abner? Oh, me, I've just been in a dead run all day, collecting admissions and then watching to see that the young'uns don't get too close to the animals. And we might not have had some trouble here this morning, too. Some trouble? Yeah, them two elephants just come right now tearing this place up. Cedric was moving that cage of white mice over to the far side of the tent yonder, and the door come open, and just as he was passing them elephants. Them mice got to run around on the ground and scared them elephants to death. Just scared them. You mean the elephants were scared of them little mice? Why, well, just scared them out now to death. They rolled their eyes and waved them tramps around and snorted. You never heard such a funny noise in your life. It's, it's when they holler that way. Lama sound like they're blowing a horn or something. Well, this is a big crazy cat. Why, well, Lord, me, I never heard such cans on. Yeah, I've always heard that elephants were scared of mice that way. Well, I do know. I wouldn't have thought that. Big as they are. No. Well, they're funny critters, all right. I was just looking at them a while ago. They, they must be awful old. Old? Well, no, they, they get to be a lot bigger than that, Abner. Yeah, I know, but look how wrinkled they are. Their skin there looks like it's about four sizes too big for them. Yeah. <laughs> I was just noticing the way they pick up that hay. Look at that. <laughs> You yeah, sort of feel it around with yeah. that snout and get your hand full up and roll it right up there in his Yeah, yeah, well, And then he makes a fella hungry to watch him, don't he? Well, I love to watch them monkeys back here. <laughs> They're the beatingest things i ever seen. Just might not like humans. Well, uh, fact is, there's one of them back there that looks enough like Cedric to be his own brother. Like Cedric. Yeah, come back here. I want to show you fellas. <laughs> Better not let Cedric in the cage with him. You might turn the wrong one loose when you go to let him out. Which one is it that looks like Cedric, Abner? Uh, let's see. Uh, I believe that's... Yeah, yeah. yeah that's him sitting right back there in the corner. Yeah. <laughs> Look at him. <laughs> if Cedric ain't a dead ringer for him. <laughs> uh, is he sort of a family resemblance there? Why, sure he is. And then that little one there, he looks a little like Grandpappy Spears, don't he? <laughs> don't tell Grandpappy that I said Yes, yeah, so. sure, I guess he does look like Grandpappy. <laughs> well, what are you doing with this uh, cow over here, Abner? Why, uh, nothing. I just had her and brought her down here. I know they know there's been as big a crowd standing around her today as anything else. Just stand there by the eye and look like her, just like they never had saw one before. Well, more than likely thought she was a freak of some kind, or you wouldn't have had her in here. Yeah, well, that's what they thought. Yeah. The school professor from over at Shady Grove come over and brought four bales of hay and a bunch of scholars and two sacks of chops this afternoon. I heard him tell the scholars that uh, it was a sacred cow from Indiana. From India? Yeah, yeah, I believe that is what he said, uh, Sacred cow to me. But she ain't from there, I know, for I swapped her off as if she's drunk, you know. Oh, my goodness. Teddy, Teddy, keep them mice away from them elephants, I told yeah. you. I just leave them where they're at. Hey, you, you fellas go ahead and look all you want to. I'll have you go over here and help that. Yeah, you know, find them down there if you can. Sure, go ahead, Abner. I've got to be going a minute anyway. Well, sir, Dick, this is right interesting, you know. Stand around here and look at these fern animals <laughs> for nothing this way. Well, Abner's in the height of his glory now, ain't he? Oh, my. <laughs> he wouldn't swap places with President Roosevelt. <laughs> he was saying used to how he's always wanted a circus ever since he was just a kid of a boy growing up. <laughs> well, I guess we all did, love. Oh, yes. Yeah. <laughs> well, to be right honest with you, I'm sort of enjoying owning a half interest in it myself. <laughs> I'd love to help run it if I didn't have that store over there to look after. Well, look who's coming in yonder. Where? Oh. Well, howdy, Squire. Yeah, good evening, gentlemen. Good evening. Uh, well, where's Abner? Why, he's right over there. Abner! Abner, come here. I've been sitting over there on my gallery all afternoon uh, watching the crowd over here. Looks like you've done a big business today, man. Well, yeah, done big business, but we weren't charging no admission. Just letting them in for feed. Yeah, look at that sack of feed they took in over there, Squire. Yeah. Well, 
Well, sir, you know, I seen everybody coming in with a bale of hay or corn or feed of some sort. Yeah, I see now. <laughs> well, we had to figure out some way to get feed for these animals. Now, what you doing in here, Squire? The show ain't open yet. Uh, Cedric, stand up there by that front door and keep everybody out of here. Uh, well, now, uh, I ain't in here to see the show, Abner. Uh, I just come over to talk a little business with you. Yes, man, it brings back old times and pleasant recollections to smell the sawdust again. Smell the sawdust again? Oh, yes, yes. You know, I followed the circus for years. Oh, I allowed you meant you'd been in the sawmill business. Oh, man, well, I was with Barnum and Bailey for nine straight seasons and was ringmaster for Hagenbeck Wallace for four years. Now, that's what I want to see you about. You fellas have got a good thing here if you knew how to run it. Yeah, we don't know nothing about their circuit business. We, we'll have to admit to that. Uh -huh. It's all new to us. Well, that's what I say. Now, right there's where I come in. There's six to ever train. And I know the circuit business backwards and forwards. I can take a hold of this thing, put in a trapeze performer, Tight rope walkers, some bareback riders, all that. Build a real show out of it. Yeah. That's what you got to do. We ought to have all them things, all yeah. right. Clowns and such as that. Well, you mean if you want to go to work for a squire? Well, in a way, yes, Abner, in a way. Now, here's a proposition that I had in mind, men. You and Lum put up the money, and then the three of us are going together on this property. Well, the possibilities of Lum and Abner's circus must look pretty good if Squire Skimp wants in on it. <laughs> Have you ever wished that you were one of those fortunate folk who seem to be able to get along without much sleep? <laughs> They're astonishing, aren't they? They never seem to get tired. Now there's a reason for this. It's largely because when they do go to sleep, they sleep soundly. If you don't believe that, try this plan for the next few nights. Drink a glass full of Horlick's malted milk, hot, just before you go to bed. Here's what it does. It soothes you, relaxes you, helps you to get to sleep quicker. Once asleep, you sleep sounder, more restfully than ever before. You awake completely refreshed and ready to go. That sounds like a good suggestion, doesn't it? You've only to try it to find out just exactly how good it is. But be sure you use Horlicks, the original malted milk. You can get it at your favorite druggist in either natural or chocolate flavor. This is Carlton Bricker, speaking for Lum and Abner and Horlicks who now bid you all good night and good health.